Business confidence in Jamaica is growing, as evidenced by the fact that Jamaica has retained its ranking as the number one country in the Caribbean to do business. Welcome to another 30-minute segment of Jamaica Magazine, where we share with you how the government has maintained this course of investment and business growth. I'm Adrian Atkinson. We get things going with the news right after this break. Caribbean territory, but we now want that virus take set pan we. So make sure it's send us stagnant water in sight and mash up all my state of bread in sight. Poor hole in the tin, them where you dash by and change the water in your vase every day. No litter, dispose of your garbage proper. You know them, the tin, the we turn green blacker. Tour your community and tour your yard for suppress mosquito. We have to go hard. Dash with old tire turn over drum pan for prevention is the greatest weapon. And special shout out to pregnant. Ladies, protect yourselves and protect your babies. Grab for your zapper and your mosquitoes. Pray we fiddle all that we can to keep them away. How we now was in me? Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm, and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, January 27. 57,000 U.S. dollars worth of beds have been gifted to the Ministry of Health for hospitals across Jamaica. Food for the Poor sourced and delivered the beds to the hospitals, while Jerry and Nephew funded their purchase. They were officially handed over to the Ministry during a ceremony on January 26. Health Minister Horace Daly has welcomed the partnership, which he says is helping to improve the healthcare system. For its part, he says government is still working on providing more bed space at the Spanish Town, Maypen and Cornwall Regional Hospitals for this financial year. We are going to do it. I want our partners to know that we are going to do it. We're going to fix the system as best as we can so the people of Jamaica can be comfortable and we can deliver good health care. Jamaica is well advanced to becoming fully compliant with the rules of the World Trade Organization WTO. Commerce Minister Anthony Hilton says the recent passage of legislation such as the Special Economic Zone Act has brought the country closer to meeting the requirements for conformity with the agreement on subsidies and countervailing measures. Jamaica as a global logistics hub, supported by special economic zones, will offer quick turnaround through nearshore value-added logistics services that will reduce the time to Latin America and other markets within the Western Hemisphere. Legislation has also been passed to pave the way for the establishment of an international financial services hub which will offer investment opportunities for traders. Minister Hilton was addressing a recent trade facilitation forum with Director General of the WTO, Roberta Azevedo, who was on an official visit to the island. An eastbound off-ramp created on Highway 2000 near Old Harbor St. Catherine is to provide significant benefit to students and business operators traveling from Maypen to access Old Harbor. Transport Works and Housing Minister Dr. Omar Davies officially opened the ramp recently. The eastbound off-ramp has a speed limit of 50 km per hour, while the road approaching the ramp has a speed limit of 80 km per hour. Minister Davies says it has reduced travel time between Maypen and Old Harbour and made travelling less costly to students. A large percentage of the students attending high schools in the Maypen Veer area are actually from Old Harbour. This reopening of the ramp is equally of importance to Maypen as it is to Old Harbour. And it's not just for business, and I, I stopped and spoke to all the motor, motorists who are backed up and it's a very important um, development for them because otherwise they have had to have avoided the, 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 the toll road. 
The Heart Trust NTA will be launching an initiative to provide grant funding to micro, small and medium-sized enterprises MSMEs. The agency's executive director, Dr. Wayne Wesley, made the announcement recently at a Ministry of Education press conference. He said eligible entrepreneurs could each receive up to $3 million in grant funding for their businesses. The MSME program is an initiative to facilitate employment creation. We have put approximately uh, somewhere between 60 to $80 million available for assisting our own trainees as well as existing MSMEs for expanding their own capacity to, to, to facilitate more employment. The program will initially target 20 MSMEs and 60 hard trained graduates at the National Vocational Qualification of Jamaica NVQJ level. And finally, the Ministry of Education is looking to expand its safe school zones to create a more sterile environment for students and education staff. The safe school policy is being reviewed to extend safe school zones up to 50 meters beyond the institution's borders. Director of Safety and Security in Schools, Assistant Superintendent Coolridge Minter, made the announcement on Tuesday. He was addressing the IKEA security in higher education institutions in the Caribbean Conference. We are hoping that if we get those recommendations in the safe school policy passed, then we can make further submissions for changes to other legislation. So there would be reduced speed limits where there is a school, and particularly schools that are located on some major corridors. The ministry's safe school policy was also revised last year to incorporate human trafficking into the curriculum at the grade 9 level. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thank you for watching. Did you know climate change is decreasing the quality and quantity of water? Climate change is expected to affect all aspects of food security, especially in the tropical region of which we are a part. Climate change related hazards such as prolonged droughts, more severe storms, and the overall irregularity of rainfall, these climatic stressors have resulted a reduction of water in our rivers and watersheds. Youth, we are depending on you to spread the message of climate change and its impacts. Be a climate change agent in your home, school or community. With climate change, we must change. Innovation is the name of the game for the Port Authority of Jamaica. Recently, they evaluated their service delivery process and found where they could implement changes to make it easier for you, yes you, to access goods and services. Learn more in the upcoming feature. Government is on a mission to transform the Jamaican economy and create jobs by developing a logistics-centered economy. How will this be done? by further integrating the island into the global value chain with the implementation of the Logistics Hub initiative. With plans to position Jamaica as the fourth node in the global logistics chain, government is intent on taking full advantage of the increased trade opportunities expected from the expansion of the Panama Canal. Activities have been kicked into higher gear with the recent signing of a concession agreement to expand the Kingston Container Terminal. This is a major development which will have significant benefits for the country's development and is an important component for the logistics hub. On April 7, 2015, after years of arduous negotiations, the government of Jamaica through the Port Authority inked a 30-year concession agreement to finance, expand, operate and transfer the Kingston Container Terminal. The 510 million US dollar deal was signed with French container shipping group Terminal Link CMA CGM. Greater private sector involvement by way of investments in the expansion of major infrastructure, such as our seaports and airports, is a major plank of our economic growth strategy. That strategy is geared toward achieving greater levels of economic growth to produce more high-quality jobs and business opportunities. 
it's uh, really what we uh, intend to do with you in Jamaica. It's a global partnership. It's a win-win partnership. The concession agreement lays the groundwork for the greater movement of goods and services while increasing employment and training for Jamaicans. The benefits of this uh, agreement are that Kingston will remain a leading regional and international transportation port for the foreseeable future in partnership with one of the uh, top tier GTOs, global terminal operators. The agreement paves the way for the dredging and expansion of the KC team two phases. What will Jamaica benefit from in phase one? Improve infrastructure. Phase one of the project consists of the deepening of the navigational access channel, the turning circle for the vessels, and case keys to allow access to the 12,500 TU vessels with a 14.2 meter draft at the beginning, and in phase two, that will become a 15.5 meter draft. For the Kingston Container Terminal employees, most of whom will be re-employed, they will be exposed to the best in class technologies and techniques. For the, the PAJ can itself now more effectively manage its debt obligations and is in a better pos position to finance the program of work to further enhance the competitiveness of the maritime sector. The negotiations have been long, but I be, do believe that our major objectives have been accomplished. One, we have a global terminal operator linked with a major container shipping line, which are leaders in their field. Secondly, we'll have a multi-user port, and there are clear virtues that you, any legitimate shipping line can participate and utilize the facilities. Thirdly, the cost of dredging will be assumed by the concessionaire, freeing the government from this financial obligation. With the agreement now signed, the new concessionaire will be operating in Jamaica as Kingston Freeport Terminal, and the deepening of the navigational access is to begin immediately. We like Jamaica we, because there is governance in this country, there is security in this country, and it is an equi equitable environment for employees and employers. We will be continuing our efforts to improve the business climate, adding to recent major improvements on our global ranking as a place where it is easy to do business and as the best place in the Caribbean to do business. Jamaica is now well on its way to getting maximum benefits from its strategic location for the advancement of its people. Doing business in Jamaica is also becoming easier as a result of the reform of Jamaica's public procurement process. The process will see a reduction in time and money spent in the procurement of goods and services. In the next feature, we share with you the changes that are coming your way. Jamaica's business sector is becoming much more competitive, largely in part to the transformation taking place in the public procurement process. Now, the sourcing and provision of goods and services is being made easy through the enactment of the Public Procurement Act, PPA. The Act is Jamaica's first standalone legal instrument which will guide and regulate how government spends taxpayers' dollars on the procurement of goods, services, and works. 
allowing all parties involved to see increased value for money. With the enactment of the PPA, several strategies will be employed to provide support to persons who participate in the public procurement process, creating a clear connection from advertising to contracting. The Office of Public Procurement Policy will perform the role of making recommendations to the government with respect to the policies to be adopted for public procurement and being the national contact point provide support to persons who participate in the public procurement process and other stakeholders such as international development partners. The Public Procurement Commission will promote efficiency in public procurement proceedings, the implementation of procurement contracts, and the transparency and equity in the award of such contracts. Under the Act, participants will see the development of a code of conduct for public officers and best public practice guidelines for public procurement. There will also be continued training for public officials and the implementation of an online version of the procurement process known as e-procurement. For more information on Jamaica's public procurement reform, contact the Ministry of Finance and Planning at 922-8600. You may also visit their website at www.mof.gov.jm. Jamaica, among the top 10 most improved economies in the world. That's right, our island's business environment has advanced to the extent that the World Bank has noticed. The multilateral agency has named Jamaica one of the most improved economies globally in which to do business in its newly released Doing Business Report 2016. This ranking is attributed to Jamaica's implementation of four major reforms over the past year. Investors have noticed too and are coming on board. So let's continue to work together to make Jamaica the place of choice to do business. How has it been going since you stepped into January 2016? Have you been able to seamlessly get back into your work with him? Many of us might still be struggling to find our flow. You know that place where you are completely immersed in an important and challenging task? The place where you lose track of time and where you work without being self-conscious, stressed or worried? That is known as flow or in a groove. And we all know when we are there. Here are three things you can do to help you achieve the state on a daily basis. Try to be consistent and look for improvements in any given task. Let's say you're trying to learn a new language. Last week you had five of the vocabulary words done, Pat. This week you have mastered ten words. That shows the degree of improvement. Do it because you enjoy it. It might be difficult to think of enjoyment and work, but I'm sure there are individual tasks you enjoy at work. Use those tasks to build your engagement and fuel your enjoyment as you prepare for the more tedious activities. See what you do as something bigger than yourself, as part of the process of creating purpose in your life. Look around and see how you might be inspiring to others. Ask yourself the question that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. asked. What are you doing for others? The more successful you are at creating your daily flow, the more momentum you build. Continue to identify the changes that you can make that will keep you on the right path to success. Lapis damming kills. It is a clear and present danger to all communities and our society at large. Up to August, 138 murders in Era 1 have been associated with lottery scamming. I want to make a personal appeal to parents and other family members to ensure that they do not 
by their silence give tacit support to their children who are involved in criminal behavior. Through the labor market information system, the government has created a T-junction that facilitates employment. This facility is a one-stop shop where data and information flows easily, assisting both employers and employees to be perfectly matched in the job-seeking process. Stacey Johnson and Marsha Edwards are both visiting the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. They'll both be utilizing the services of the Ministry's National Labor Market Information System. The National Labor Market Information System, LMIS, is a multifaceted service hub geared towards grooming Jamaica's labor market for service. The hub caters to both employers and job seekers as a job matching facility. The LMIS has three components, the Labor Market Intelligence, LMI, the Skills Bank and the Electronic Labor Exchange, ELE. We are about the business of not only opening up markets for jobs, but also opening up the minds of our innovators, entrepreneurs and employers to the possibilities for job creation. For the long-term goal is to make the LMIS an integral part of the government's national social protection strategy, which aims to strengthen the state's existing social protection framework to address the needs of vulnerable citizens. As part of the strengthening process, the LMIS offers a number of services to equip both job seekers and employers to meet the demands of the labor market. The Labor Market Intelligence, a component of the LMIS, provides information on programs and training opportunities for the youth and funding assistance for education and small businesses. Additionally, the LMI division analyzes quantitative or qualitative data and reviews the emerging trends and factors which influence the labor market. The assessments ensure that the services offered can meet the economic and labor market conditions and that the appropriate education, qualifications, training and skills are available in the market. The division also has to adopt a forward-thinking approach in determining the current and future demand and supply of labor and jobs. And then of course, because of that database of skills and, and, and occupations, you'll find that you'll be able to identify gaps in the, in the workforce. And so persons such as education planners, um, career developers, curriculum developers, will be able to identify where those gaps are and to develop curriculum and training programs to attract persons to fill those gaps in the workforce. Just down the aisle, Marsha Edwards is meeting with an LMIS representative. As a beneficiary of their services, she is confident that the LMIS can provide the employees needed to fill the vacancies within her organization. The Electronic Labor Exchange allowed Ms. Edwards to upload vacancies in her organization and then search for possible employees through the LMIS Skills Bank. The Skills Bank is a crucial tool for both employers and job seekers as it hosts an untapped resource of skills and services available to the Jamaican job market. It is a free site and therefore I see it also as a cost-saving device for employers in that they'll, their advertising budget can be reduced because they'll be able to access this information freely on the website. The Skills Bank will also assist in finding the jobs locally and therefore I think that it will also assist in reducing the reliance on foreign workers, hence the need for work permits. But it also has an advantage for employees, for workers, because they are able to post their resumes on the website and those resumes will be available to all employers and so they may find job opportunities that they will not normally find by sending out applications. The Skills Bank can also be used to determine the hot jobs in the marketplace and therefore position the LMIS to better meet the needs of employers and job seekers. For her first stop, 
Stacey Johnson will be participating in the initial job seeker screening process conducted through the Electronic Labor Exchange section. This process includes registering on the LMIS information portal. During the process, Stacey will also be developing her resume writing, interview techniques and job search skills. The ELE also provides services in career counselling. After Ms. Johnson has completed the initial screening process, she will create her resume on the LMIS website, which in turn can be reviewed by employers such as Ms. Edwards. Primarily what we do here is that we facilitate job seekers and employers to meet, whether through our system, which is, a, which is a, our website, which is www.lmis.gov.jm, and it facilitates that link in cyberspace, where the individual may access job, jobs in terms of the job seeker, and in case of the employer, they may also post their openings and allow for job seekers to actually find them in Cyberland. Now, one of the things then that we have been trying to promote within the ELE is the, the best person for the job. The compatibility factor is enhanced through the ELE's employability skills training session, which prepares prospective employees to meet the demands of the working world. Also administered through the ELE is the Canadian Skilled Worker Program, which provides employment opportunities in various skilled categories in Canada. In addition to their in-office services, the LMIS uses two primary means to ensure optimum service to their clientele through their online portal and their employer service representative programs. Employers and job seekers are able to access the ELE services offered by the LMIS through their online portal. For employers, they can post and edit vacancies as well as access the skills bank. Job seekers, on the other hand, can, from the privacy of their homes, edit and post their resumes as well as apply for vacancies posted on the LMIS website. An additional benefit to both employers and job seekers is that all services both in office and online are free of cost. The LMIS also works with career development officers to empower job seekers to make viable career choices. The LMIS is committed to serving Jamaica's labor force and they are building sustainable partnerships to make this a reality. We are imploring our employers to be a part of the LMIS in terms of national development. We want you to play your part. Utilize us as an extension of your HR department. We are capable and we stand ready to assist in every way and form. Through their commitment, the LMIS is grooming and empowering Jamaicans to achieve their fullest potential as a productive workforce. In the long term, we envisage that the LMIS will gradually evolve into a national employment portal, given its wide range of employment and career development services. We are convinced that over time, it will assist in increasing productivity levels through the use of labor market data to guide policy decisions in respect of training, education, and curriculum development for the workforce of the future. The LMIS in shaping that workforce is making employment everybody's business.